In late 2011, Bethesda released an epic open world fantasy game, The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. It won over 200 Game of the Year awards and is still one of my favorite games ever. You play as the Dragonborn on a quest to defeat Alduin, a dragon prophesied to destroy the world. As many times as I've fired up this game, I've only bothered to see that quest through to the end like once or twice. There are just so many areas available to you to explore, side missions to pursue, and characters to meet that it is very easy to get distracted. That said, the magical gems of Skyrim always managed to catch my attention. Today, we're gonna talk about some of my favorites that you may have missed when you first played the game. Let's talk about the Black Star and Azura Star. There are soul gems scattered throughout the world of Skyrim, and these two stars are the biggest and best. Soul gems are like the batteries of Skyrim, and are used to power the magic in your favorite elemental weapons. But instead of anodes, cathodes, and zinc and stuff, it's got the soul of a dead thing in it. And like a lot of batteries, a soul gem is no good when it runs out. So if you like freezing people with chill rend, you're gonna want a stash of soul gems. That's where the black star comes in. When you initially find the star, it's broken, but it is yours. From here, you have two choices. Either pledge yourself to serve Azura and receive Azura's star, or take the broken star to a mage named Nelikar, and he'll fix it for you, leaving you with the black star. Let's talk about Azura's star first. Just based on the color, it looks like it could be either aquamarine or a light green barrel, maybe even a proper emerald. Now, we know that these are all members of the barrel family, but this raises an interesting question. What really is the difference between them? When does a green barrel become an emerald? Well, that depends. Are you buying or selling? Kajit has wares, if you have coin. Emerald is the most valuable variety of barrel, so if you're trying to sell Azura Star, you probably want to market it as an emerald. You thinking about buying Azura Star? Better convince that seller that he's got a green barrel. Emerald gets its color from chromium and vanadium, and some people felt that only specimens with enough chromium could really be called true emerald. In 1963, though, GIA decided that sufficiently saturated vanadium-bearing emerald was also emerald. That changed the emerald industry. But there's no GIA in Skyrim, so I'd go and ask the Thieves Guild maybe, see what they think it's worth. They know their way around unusual gems. Wink. Now, let's take a look at the Black Star. No, not, not that one. Immediately, we can see that it is a totally different color. In fact, there appear to be two colors here. This tells me one of two things. Either we've got color zoning or pleochroism. Let's talk about color zoning first. It's kind of like looking at the rings inside of a tree. The color zoning of a gemstone can tell you a lot about its history and formation. This appearance can be caused by temperature changes during the formation process or by fluctuations in the trace elements present. And remember, none of these stones are formed overnight. It takes millions and up to billions of years for each of these stones to grow. A single band of color in a sapphire or a fluorite gem can represent millions of years of growth. Now, let's suppose the different colors we see in the black star are a result of pleochroism. Pleochroism is where a gemstone shows different colors based on the behavior of light as it travels through the gemstone. The word comes from Greek and means more colors. If a stone is pleochroic, it can display a different color depending on which angle you view it from. You can see this effect really strongly if you view a stone through a polarizing filter because the transmitted light has been split into two or more separate rays, and because the polarizing filter blocks light rays in all but one direction. Turn the stone in all directions, 360 degrees, and you change what light your filter allows to pass through, thus changing the color of the stone. There are several gemstones that exhibit strong, observable pleochroism, even without a polarizing filter. The one that I think best matches the black star in color, though, is tanzanite. Tanzanite can actually show three different colors, an almost violet blue, a greenish blue, and a violet. So all these real life stones we've mentioned kind of match the colors of the black star and Azura star, but there's one major aspect of these stars that we haven't addressed yet. It has eight arms. Nothing in real life looks like that. Although we do have one gemstone that comes kind of close. Mm, kind of. I'm talking about chrysoberyl. While chrysoberyl doesn't grow like an octopus, it's not uncommon for it to exhibit a growth phenomenon called twinning. Twinning is basically where two separate crystals intergrow and share some of the same crystal lattice points. Chrysoberyl is part of the orthorhombic crystal system, which means that most twins form on planes parallel to the prism face. Each twin is usually oriented about 120 degrees from its neighboring twins. And if everything turns out perfectly, you end up with a little six-pointed star. 
A six link twin. Not quite the Octomom we were looking for, but hey, we're working with what we got. This isn't oblivion here. So it looks like nothing that we have on Earth here quite fits the bill of the Black Star or Azura Star, which I probably should have seen coming with the whole soul snatching property. Anyways, which star would you choose? The Black Star or the Azura Star? Let me know down in the comments and don't forget to like, subscribe, and of course, ring that bell so you don't miss out on our future videos. Fus Roda!